What was the reason why God sent the angels to, to those four angels to hold back the winds of strife? So his people could be sealed. Keep that in mind. We are living in the sealing times, brothers and sisters. And I'm trying to do a revision so that we, we can stay on track of what we have been st studying. Remember again, uh, we are continuing the study on Revelation chapter 11, mm -hmm. which uh, also a, is a continuation of Revelation chapter 10, uh, which speaks of the great disappointment. And then uh, we were told to prophesy the same message again. And we saw in Revelation chapter 11 uh, how God's people were persecuted for a period of uh, 1260 years, which was uh, the Dark Ages. And they were called the two witnesses, or the two olive trees, standing again before God. And we saw that the standing before God usually means uh, judgment. Mm -hmm. Whenever uh, we hear this expression, not every time, but uh, oftentimes when we see this from the, from the Bible, standing. Like for example, in uh, Daniel chapter 12, the Bible says uh, in verse 1, there shall be a time of trouble like there never was. And then at that time, what would happen at that time? Michael, Michael shall stand. When Michael stands, what happened? Probation, Probation closes. That means judgment. Yes. And again, we also mentioned last time in the, the book of Acts, as they were stoning Stephen, yes. what did Stephen see? Jesus standing. Jesus standing. And what, what, what did that represent? Judgment. Probation closes close for the Jewish uh, people at that moment. Uh, this was prophesied in Daniel chapter 9. A amen? Now, again, uh, we come to Revelation 7 or Revelation 6, going into Revelation 7. We saw there was judgment coming in Revelation 6, but there was a pause there. God wanted to seal His people first. And uh, this chapter, Revelation 7, uh, this is where we find the introduction of the 144,000. But now let's go to Revelation 14. Which book are we going to? Revelation 14. Revelation 14. And the Bible says, again, speaking of the 144,000, the Bible says, And I looked, and uh, lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. And uh, who was there with him? It says, uh, with him, uh, 144, and, and, uh, 140 and 4,000, uh, having uh, his father's name. Written in their foreheads. What's in the name, brothers and sisters? Character. character. So again, we are going to be focusing on the word or character there. The 144,000 were said that they were standing where again? On Mount, on Mount Zion. They were standing. Again, we look at the context of standing means judgment. judgment. They were, if they were standing with the Lamb, according to Daniel 14, that, not Daniel 14, Daniel 12 verse 1, according to Daniel 12 verse 1, that the, the Lamb, the same Lamb there, Michael, which is Jesus, will stand up. That means judgment comes. Now we see a picture of the 144,000 standing with uh, Jesus Christ. But again, uh, keep in mind, when Jesus comes, what would happen to the wicked? They will die. They will burn. They will be consumed by the brightness of His coming. But if the 144,000 are standing, what does that mean then? They have judged the world. How did they do that? Their character. In righteousness, they have judged the world. You and I living in these last days, we want to be part of this 144,000. But as we're going to look at uh, in a few moments here by God's grace, this standing there, this privilege that they had been given to stand with the Lamb did not come easy. So again, let's read the passage one more time before we move on. And then we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 1. It says again, And I looked, and lo, a Lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him, and 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Again, the name represent uh, character. When uh, Moses asked God in the book of Exodus, uh, when God uh, wanted to send Moses uh, back uh, to Egypt uh, to get his people out of Egypt, uh, Moses asked God, uh, what is your name? Whom should I say that sent me? What, how did God answer Moses? I am that I am. 
When God says, I am that I am, he was also describing uh, his character. That's who he is. He is the almighty God. He is the infinite God. He is uh, the one who's uh, always been around. Self the self-existent one. You're taking the words right out, of, out of my mouth. Don't worry about that. That's okay. <laughs> so again, uh, Moses uh, said, uh, God says rather to Moses, I am uh, that I am. Then later on, after Moses, uh, this was uh, some uh, 40 plus years later, after he brought the children of, of Israel out uh, of Egypt, then uh, Moses asked uh, God, uh, show me the water, thy glory. Yes. And what did God say to Moses? I am. He kept saying, I am again. I am a merciful God. I, I, I am a, a, a God of justice and all of these things. So God uh, is a God of uh, love, but also a God of justice. The Bible says that he will not spare the wicked. Those who want to stand up with God or to stand with the Lamb. Now, by the way, as we look at this again, it says uh, they were standing with whom? A Lamb. They were standing with a lamb. Notice with me now, standing with a lamb represents that they have gone through severe tribulation. Because uh, the lamb, there, the, the, it's not a picture of uh, the glorified Christ. This is a picture of the suffering Christ. That shows that the 144,000, as it goes on to say about them, they have uh, followed the lamb with us, however he takes them through the Fiery furnace. As a matter of fact, speaking of fiery furnace, let's go to First Peter. Where are we going to? First Peter. Peter chapter 1, we're going to. The book of First Peter. First Peter chapter 1, we're going, beginning in verse 1. We begin in verse 1. First Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. We are looking at the characteristics of the 144,000. It says, beginning in verse 1, are you there? Peter, an apostle of uh, Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered uh, throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and uh, Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God uh, the Father through sanctification of the Spirit uh, unto obedience and sprinkling of the, what is it again? Blood. The blood of uh, Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God uh, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, with which, uh, according to his abundant mercy, hath uh, begotten us again unto, uh, a, what is it? Life. Lively hope. So it's not a dead hope. It's a lively ho hope. Then it goes on to say, by the resurrection of uh, Jesus Christ uh, from uh, the dead. So the reason why we have a lively ho hope, it's because of the resurrection of uh, Jesus Christ. Because the Apostle Paul says, if Christ did not raise from the dead, my faith, your faith would be in vain. But because uh, he has uh, risen, yes. amen, then uh, therefore we have a lively hope. It goes on to say, in verse 4, to an inheritance, what kind of, uh, of inheritance? Incorruptible. Incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth uh, not away. The expression, uh, not fadeth away, means uh, it's something that endures. It's durable. It's something that we can count on. And that, brothers and sisters, is referring to the faith of uh, Jesus Christ. The faith that I must have, according to Revelation 14, 12, that the saint will keep the commandments of God and have the faith of uh, Jesus, not our faith. It's an undoing uh, faith. Let's keep reading. It says uh, also, it says, uh, let's read verse 4 again, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserve, uh, where is it reserved? In heaven, in, uh, heaven uh, for you. Notice now, that uh, inheritance, which is an incorruptible inheritance, it is reserved for us where? In heaven. In heaven. And uh, also it says, uh, it will not fade away. This is uh, referring to, partly now, eternal life. This is something that we should look forward to. This is something that our mind cannot grasp. Paul says, the apostle Paul says, eyes have not seen nor ears heard what the God has a reserve for those who love his appearing. In the meanwhile, this faith must endure. As the apostle says here, 
that, uh, of, that this inheritance will not fade away. Verse 5, who are kept. How? How was this kept? By the power of God uh, through faith. Notice the word faith. Keep that word uh, in mind there. Unto salvation, uh, ready to be revealed when? In the last days. Go with me now, brothers and sisters, to 1 Peter, same book, but this time we're looking at chapter 5. Uh, which book are we going to? 1 Peter chapter 5. Again, uh, it says uh, this uh, inheritance uh, is incorruptible and it would not fade away. Verse 1 of 1 uh, Peter chapter 5. Are you there? Amen. And the Bible says, The elders uh, which are among you I exhort, uh, who am also an elder, and are, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, that should uh, ring a bell. What have we been looking at uh, the past few Sabbaths? Witness means what again? A martyr. A martyr. So again, uh, the apostle says, uh, the elders which are among you, I exhort who am also an elder and a martyr of the sufferings of Christ uh, and also a partaker of uh, the glory that shall, notice with me now, that shall be revealed. If we were to look at this uh, closely, carefully, what was the first thing uh, that the, the apostle says that he wants to enjoy now? The sufferings of the Savior. Remember the first word there? Witness. It's a Martha. He was willing to enjoy this now in order for him to enjoy what, what comes later. Glory. What comes later? It says uh, in the latter part of the verse, uh, and of the glory that shall be revealed. Something to look uh, forward to. Almost the same exact words that he says uh, in uh, chapter 1. Skip on down to uh, verse uh, Four, it says, and when the chief shepherd, who's that? Jesus. That's Jesus. That's the lamb. Shall appear, he sh ye shall receive a crown of glory. What are the words again? Yes. That fadeth yes. not away. So again, this is something that we have to look forward to. What, what is the reason why? God is helping us to look forward to overlook our present circumstances. What is the reason why? So we can be of good courage. Yes. Brothers and sisters, let me address uh, young and old here, especially the young at this moment. If, if you haven't, uh, ha haven't eaten anything for a few hours, young people, I'm talking to you, mm -hmm. for a few hours, you are looking forward to what? Mm -hmm. To your next meal, right? You are looking forward to your next meal. And uh, does that give you hope that about something that would satisfy your hunger? Young people, talk to me. Amen? You remember what the Word of God says? That God says to, through Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 7, He says uh, that I have allowed uh, the children of Israel to go, that they may know that I am the Lord, uh, that, that do what? That men might, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The word of God tells us here that he has a, a, an inheritance, something to look forward to, something that will not corrupt. But in the meanwhile, we are still in this world. The lamb, not the lamb, the 144,000 follow the lamb, not in heaven now, but here on this earth, whithersoever he takes them. That means, brothers and sisters, they were looking forward to this uh, inheritance. They were willing to suffer for, for God. But our faith must be tried in the fiery furnace. Amen? Amen. Our faith must be tested. Go back now again uh, to 1 Peter. Which book again? 1 Peter. 1 Peter. And the Bible says, let's pick up in verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Who are kept... By the power of God uh, through faith and uh, salvation. Ready to be revealed uh, in the, when is that? The last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season. This is how God sees uh, our journey here. Though it may seem long, brothers and sisters. But God sees it as a season. As the apostle again says, uh, a day, a thousand years with the Lord is how? Like one day, brothers and sisters. God sees it as a season. You know what God is trying to tell us? Hang on. 
It won't be long. I believe, brothers and sisters, without a shadow of a doubt, as Jesus says to the disciples, this generation shall not pass away until all these things be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Just hang on for a few moments. Again, uh, it says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in a heaviness through manifold temptations. What kind of temptation? Not just a little bit, amen? Not just a little temptation here and there. Manifold. What does the word manifold mean? One after, uh, thank you, one after another. It's like a, a con constant uh, battle that keeps raging moment by moment, every second. Because uh, the Bible says that uh, the enemy knows that he has uh, but a short time. Verse uh, 7, then it says that the trial of your, what is it? Faith. Faith. Being, uh, what are the words that follow? Being much more precious than uh, of uh, gold. Notice with me now. The trial of your faith. Which is uh, much more precious than gold here? Is it the trial or is it the faith? faith. <laughs> Was that a tricky question? <laughs> it, it's the faith. faith. But notice with me now. When you get gold or when someone uh, get gold, what do they do with the gold? Another one of the things that they do with the gold to find out if it's genuine or not. Ah, thank you. They put it through the fire to find out if it's genuine or not. Again, let's read the, the verse in the context. The trial of your faith, verse 7 again, being much more precious than of gold. Once uh, the gold goes through the fire and they realize that the, it's genuine, what happened to that gold? Whoever finds that gold cherishes it. Mm -hmm. Amen? But now your faith must go likewise through the fire and it must come out better than gold. What verse come to mind? Isaiah 13, 12. Yes. <laughs> Let's say it together. What does it say? I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. This is uh, what God wants to do in these last days. Let's keep reading the verse. It says, uh, that perisheth, notice we, the word there, gold perishes. Mm -hmm. Ah. So notice now, your faith, this is also referring to your character because gold represents character as well. Mm -hmm. Your faith is more precious than gold because why? Gold perishes. Gold perishes. It perishes. Mm. That means, brothers and sisters, God sees something in me and in you that, is, uh, that was worth dying for. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that the reason why the Son of God came? Yes. He saw the potentials in us. Mm -hmm. Amen? He saw, He did not look at the defects in my character, but He was looking at the as a result of his sacrifice, what uh, I could become, what all of us here could become in Christ Jesus. God is saying that there is uh, something in us. If we allow him uh, to develop it, he can make it uh, more precious uh, than fine gold, even the golden wedge uh, of Ophir. He can Turn it and change it into his uh, image. Gold perishes, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. The things of this world perishes. Mm -hmm. Another thing that the Lord is teaching us is that uh, don't put material things above uh, another soul or your soul or above uh, God. Yes. Remember what God says to the disciples? Don't worry about your life. Mm -hmm. What you shall eat? what you shall wear. Mm -hmm. Look at the birds. Mm -hmm. I take care of them, but God w wants us to work on what? Building this character. Mm -hmm. Because after all, brothers and sisters, this is what we are going to take with us uh, to heaven. There's nothing else we can take with us but our character. When Jesus comes, He will come as the Bible says in the book of Malachi. He will come like a f fire. And uh, whatever can be shaken will be shaken. 
And uh, if we lack uh, stubbles and, and wood, we will be burned up. But if we are found more precious than fine gold, we will be able to stand. And that's our character. It's a character that God is coming for. Now we have an opportunity, a short time, a very, very short time to do this. A very, very short time. And now notice again, ver let's read verse 7 again. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth, though it, may be, it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor when? And glory when? When? At the appearing of Jesus Christ. So it is that uh, gold, that kind of gold there, that kind of character there, that's going to stand to see the appearing of uh, the Son of God. So you, your faith, your character is what uh, God is after. God wants to strengthen us. Let's go to the book of Job. Which book are we going to? Job. We're going to the book of Job, chapter 2, uh, chapter 23 rather. The book of Job, uh, chapter 23. And if anyone knows a thing or two about uh, suffering. the suffering, uh, about standing the test of time, uh, it was Job, brothers and sisters. Job chapter 23, this is where we go in, beginning in verse 8. Notice with me now. Are you there? Amen. And the Bible says, uh, Behold, uh, I go forward. This is, uh, are you there? Amen. This is Job talking. I still hear pages turning. Uh, I'll wait for you. Glad to see young people turning uh, the pages of their Bibles. Job uh, chapter 23, this is where we are, Amen. beginning in verse 8. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. And uh, backward, but I cannot perceive him. Mm -hmm. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, and I cannot see him. This is Job going through this uh, agony and uh, trying to find answers uh, to his uh, dilemma. Mm -hmm. He's seeking God. He's seeking for answers, but he was not hearing anything from God. Then uh, Job goes on to say, verse uh, 10, But he knoweth the way, notice now, he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath, uh, what's the word? Tried. Tried me, I shall come forth as what? Gold. As gold. Yes. So notice now, Job was uh, questioning or wondering, uh, where was God throughout this whole ordeal that he was going through? But then, uh, now, if you read uh, verse uh, 10 carefully, Job surrendered. He says, uh, but he knoweth the way. Brothers and sisters, I must get to a point, uh, we must get to a point, uh, where in spite of uh, what we are going through, that after searching our heart, like Job, we could say that God knows me. That's what Job was saying here. He says one more time, uh, but he knoweth the way that I go. He knows everything about me. He knows that I'm blameless. That's what Job was saying. So Job surrendered and said, I'm, I am accepting the trials because he says this is what he was looking forward to. Job realizes at that moment that God allows these things to happen to him to purify him. To make, him, to make him even better than he was before. We can never come to a point where we can say that we have arrived, brothers and sisters. Job talked to God. And this was not the first conversation like this he had with God. He had similar previous conversation like this. Then uh, he would come to a point. He, he surrendered as if to say, let the Lord has his way. Again, one more time, verse 10, he says, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. So Job was looking forward to come out on the other end of this trial, of this test as gold. So whatever we go through, brothers and sisters, let us do it with patience. Amen. Amen? Because what's the reason why God is, uh, is allowing it to happen? Because he wants us to come out on the other end uh, more precious than uh, fine gold. 
even uh, the golden wedge of Ophir. Go with me now to the book of uh, Isaiah. We, which book are we going to? Isaiah chapter 13. Uh, it's the same book where we just quoted this. But uh, again, uh, notice the context in uh, why when God says, uh, I will make a man uh, more precious uh, than, than fine gold. Because uh, as we looked at this uh, last time, uh, we saw that uh, the event uh, that, that's about uh, to transpire. And uh, are you there? Are you there? We are in Isaiah chapter 13. Yes. Isaiah chapter 13. Uh, are you there? Yes. Okay. And the Bible says, uh, beginning uh, in uh, verse uh, 14, uh, and it shall be. Are you there? Yes, sir. And it shall be as the chase roe and as a sheep that no man taketh up, uh, they shall every man uh, turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. Mm -hmm. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. And uh, everyone uh, that is joined unto them uh, shall fall by the, by, by the sword. So what is coming? War is coming. Yes. It says, uh, their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses uh, shall be spoiled and their wives uh, ravish. So again, what is coming? War, War is coming. This is a a picture again of what's about to take place, brothers and sisters. But let's stop, pause there for a moment. What, what happened before that? What did God say before that in verse 12? While all of these things will be transpiring, will be happening throughout all that, God wants to make a man more precious than fine gold, even the golden wedge of Ophir. Notice with me now on the screen what it says there. It says uh, we are living uh, in... Uh, what is it? Uh, perilous times. There is need of all the, the strength. The, the what? There is need of all the strength, support, and grace. That, what, what's the word? Our faith can grasp in order that everyone may make straight paths for his feet, lest the weak be turned out of the way. I see dangers on the right and on the left. Satan is doing what? Stirring, Stirring uh, his agents uh, with intense power from beneath, uh, urging those who cooperate uh, with the po powers of darkness to make as difficult, to make what? Difficult. As difficult as possible the path of all who believe the truth for this time. As finite agents, it behooves us to consider carefully the way of our paths lest our feet shall stumble on the dark mountains of uh, unbelief. The silver and gold of earth are purified and are, what's, what are the words? Yeah. Tested by what? Fire. By fire. And the faith of God's people, which is of more value than silver and gold, will likewise do, will happen to them, Testing. will be tested in order that it's worth. It's what? Worth. Ah. So what's the reason why God will allow us to go through the fire? It's worth. What's the reason why uh, the uh, blacksmith uh, take the gold through the fire? To see it's worth. So likewise, our faith, our character must go through the fire to see our worth. To see if we are worthy to be admitted into the kingdom of God. It goes on to say, in order that its worth may be made apparent. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man, mm -hmm. than the golden wedge of Ophir. Go with me now, still in the book of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. This time we're going to chapter 48, the book of Isaiah. So God wants to purify a people. In the midst of what's about to transpire, God wants to have a group of people more precious than fine gold, even the golden wedge of Ophir. We are in Isaiah chapter 48, uh, beginning in verse 9, uh, and are you there? Amen. And the Bible says, uh, for mine name's sake, what's in the name again? Character. Character. For my name's sake uh, will I defer mine anger, and for my praise, uh, for what is it? My, my praise. praise. I will refrain from, uh, for thee, that I cut thee not off. Behold, I have refined thee. What, what, what's the word again? Refine. refine. I have refined thee, but not with a silver. I have chosen thee where? In the furnace, In the furnace 
of affliction. We remember in the book of Zechariah chapter 3, you remember what God says about uh, Joshua? Where was uh, Joshua taken out? He was like a, a branch plucked from the fire. out of uh, the fire. Notice again what it says here. The latter part of verse 10, it says, I have chosen thee. For what? In the furnace of affliction. So where has God chosen us? Every single one of us that has been chosen by God. The elect of God, as the Apostle Paul, Peter, rather, as the Apostle Peter pointed it out, we are the elect of God. It's because we have been chosen from the fiery furnace. None of us will be elected or be chosen or be admitted to the kingdom of heaven without fiery trials. Notice again another passage here from a ministry of healing of page 471. It says, trials, what is it? Trials, trials and obstacles are the Lord's chosen methods. Are, are what? The Lord's are the Lord's chosen methods of discipline and his appointed condition of success. success. Then it says, he who reads the hearts of men knows their what? Characters. Characters better than, the, than uh, they themselves know them. In his providence, he brings these uh, persons into different positions uh, in varied uh, circumstances uh, that they may discover where? In their, in their character, the defects which have been concealed from their own knowledge. So God allow us to go through the fire. He allows trial to come so that uh, what was hidden from us mm -hmm. in our character could come out. Yes. Then it says, uh, he gives uh, them uh, opportunity to correct these defects and to fit themselves uh, for his service. So today, brothers and sisters, the reason why you and I are still among the living. It's because God has given each one of us another opportunity to correct. Amen? To correct the defects in our character because God loves us. God does not want to destroy us. When God comes, He will come to destroy sin. Amen? Sin is what? The transgression of God's law. He will come to destroy sin. But unfortunately, if sin is found in me, in us, we will be destroyed in the process. So he has given us another day to correct. Yes. Amen. Notice now, go back to the quote there. He gives them opportunity to correct these defects and to fit themselves for his service. Often, he permits the water, Fire. the fires, of affliction to assail them that they may be purified. The fact, notice with me now, this is, this is the beauty of this. Notice, notice now, it says, the fact that we are called upon to endure trials, notice now, mm -hmm. shows that the Lord Jesus sees in us something what? Precious, which he desired to do what? Mm. Amen. Does God love us, brothers yes. and sisters? He loves us. He sees the potential in yes. us. Don't fight the process. Amen? Amen. You don't fight the process. That's right. Notice now, it goes on to say, If he saw in us nothing whereby he might glorify his name. Notice now, nothing whereby he might glorify his name. What would he do? Notice now. He would not spend time in refining us. Then uh, we, I should hear, Praise God. Praise God. I should hear an amen and hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that you right. see something in me yes. and you have allowed me to go through, to go through the fiery trials. Amen. Because you see me more precious than fine gold. Even uh, the golden wedge of Ophir. It goes on to say, he would not spend time in refining us. He does not cast, what is it? Worthless stones into his furnace. So again, brothers and sisters, as you look at the picture of uh, the three Hebrew boys, that's the picture that comes to mind. Yes. So how did God see those uh, three men? Worthy. worthy. Yes. They were worthy, brothers and sisters. They were not worthless. 
He does not cast the worthless stones into his furnace. So thank God, brothers and sisters. Go to the book of Malachi. Which book? Malachi. So again, God wants to do what for us, for you and I? He wants to purify us, our faith, our character. We're going to the book of Malachi chapter 3. Which book? Malachi 3. Malachi chapter 3. I still can't get over that passage there which we just read, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. I still can't get over this. And uh, notice with me now, I, as I was putting this together, as I was putting that passage there from Ministry of Healing, page 471, I, I was smiling. I was thanking God. Notice now, we are in the book of uh, Malachi chapter 3, and are you there? Beginning in verse 1. Notice now, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall do what? Prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come. To where? To his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide? He's coming. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Yes. He's coming again. But here is another question. A similar question to the questions that we looked at before last Sabbath. Who shall be able to stand? But here's the question in Malachi chapter 3, verse 2. But who may abide? The day of his coming. Who may abide the day of his coming? It says, and who shall stand when he appeareth for? Notice the reason why. The Bible asked those two questions there. The first question again was, uh, who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? Here is the reason why. Because uh, the Bible is about to describe God's character there. Yes. Notice now. For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller soap. So who may abide? Who may abide? Those that God sees precious in his sight. Remember we just read he does not cast worthless stones into the furnace. So who will be abide? No, look at verse 3. It says, and he shall sit as a what? As a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So notice now, what kind of faith God wants us to have? A faith that would go through the fire. The righteousness there represents the faith that has gone through the trials, through the fire. And that's the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It comes with a price, brothers and sisters. But heaven is still cheap enough. Amen? Notice another quote here from a spirit of prophecy. It says, uh, from a Review and Herald, February 14th, 1888. He that's Jesus, offered his life to pay the penalty for the broken law that men might have, what is it? Another trial. So he did what? He did what? He paid the penalty for the broken law that we might have another trial. Has God given you another trial today? You woke up this morning, it's because God gave you another trial. God gave us another, another test. God gave us another opportunity. It goes on to say, He promised to give those who believed in Him grace. What is grace? Who knows what grace is? It's the power to resist sin and temptation. He does, he does what again? He promised to give those who believe in Him grace to resist temptation and power to build up a righteous character through keeping uh, the commandments of God. Our Savior purchased uh, this privilege for us uh, at an infinite cost. How blind must men be to his own interests that he does not uh, accept uh, the terms of God. He does not what? Accept the terms, accept the terms of God. And receive uh, eternal life. It is a solemn thought that the condition of men required the sacrifice of the Son of God in order that he might be redeemed from a life of sin 
to a life of faith and obedience. Though the race has fallen in rebellion and ruin awaits those who neglect so great a salvation, Christ has promised to do what? To make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of an offer. This, notice now, this honor will be conferred upon men because the Son of God as His substitute and surety has done what? Has imparted to Him His own righteousness. What kind of righteousness is that? As you look at the life of Jesus, His faith is that righteousness, the faith that goes through the fiery trials. We have been given an opportunity, brothers and sisters, to represent the Son of God, to be part of the 144,000 in these last days who would be standing with uh, the Lamb. Let's go to the book of Zechariah. Which book are we going to? Zechariah. We're going to the book of Zechariah chapter 13. Just uh, a few pages uh, backward. Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 13, uh, beginning uh, in uh, verse uh, 7. Are you there? Amen. Zechariah chapter 13, uh, beginning in verse Amen. 7. <laughs> And the Bible says uh, in verse 7 of the book of Zechariah, again, uh, just a few pages back from uh, Malachi. And the Bible says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow. Do you know who this is referring to here? This is talking about Jesus. That's a prophecy about Jesus. Then it says here, Seth, the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd. Now you'll see who... Yes. It was talking about, smite the shepherd and the sheep shall scatter and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. Now notice with me now verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off. How many parts? Two, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But notice now there is a third part there. But the third shall be left therein. So the Lord is coming. It says uh, that uh, he will cut off uh, how many parts? Two. Two parts. But there is uh, one part left. What will God do? Notice now. Verse 9. And I will bring the third part through the what? Fire. Hmm. I, uh, he will do what? Through the, fire. through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will tried them as gold is tried they shall call on my name and i will hear them i will say it is my people who will be his people there those that go through the fire the third part there amen so two groups of people in these last days this is really a picture of the church of god amen, amen. it is a picture of the church this is uh, referring to those uh, within the church that would uh, follow the broad path, the broad way. As Jesus says uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 13, uh, that leadeth to destruction. Then there is a small group, uh, Jesus says, that follow a narrow path. That leadeth to what? To life. Amen? So there's two groups of people in these last days. One will look at the... Uh, the obstacles, the trial, the test, but we'll choose the easy path. That group there, God rejects it. God now will turn to the smaller group and said, I'm going to make this group more precious than fine gold, even the golden wedge of Ophir, because that's exactly what he said. He says, and I will bring the third. I will bring what? The third part. Through the fire, and will find, and will we find them as silver is refined? Question for for you now: Which group will we, which you would rather be in? <laughs> which group? The third part, because that's the group God is focusing on now. God sees some there that are worthy to be cast into that furnace, brothers and sisters. This is what God wants to do for you and I. Amen. And young people as well, you paying attention? That's what God wants to do for all of us in these last days. Because Bible prophecies are unfolding right in front of us. Yes. We are living in the midst of a crisis. 
The world is in full agitation. The world is mad right now, brothers and sisters. Notice what Spirit of Prophecy again says here. It says, men need to be what? Aroused. To realize the solemnity of the time. The nearness of the day mm -hmm. when the human probation shall be ended. God gives no man a message. How many men? No man. A message that it will be five years or 10 years or 20 years before this earth history shall close. He would not give any living being an excuse for, for doing what? For delaying the preparation for his appearing. If ever there was a, such a time when we should not think of five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, that uh, Jesus will come, this time is now. And as we see what's happening, turn with me to the book of uh, Matthew. Which book are we going to? Matthew. Matthew chapter 24 we're going to. Mm -hmm. We're going to the book of Matthew chapter 24. And uh, as we started to look at before, in the book of Matthew chapter 24, the disciples came and asked Jesus uh, some questions about uh, the destruction of uh, Jerusalem. And uh, Jesus started to answer them by telling them what will take place Jesus revealed to them uh, not just uh, the destruction of Jerusalem, but uh, through using uh, the, the destruction there in AD 70 as a model, as a picture of what would transpire throughout the whole world, Amen. what would happen uh, throughout the whole world. And Jesus says, uh, notice with me now, it says uh, in uh, verse uh, 5, For many shall come in my name, uh, saying, I am Christ, uh, and shall deceive many. Ye shall hear of uh, wars. And what else? And rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So again, skip on down to verse 7. He says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, then uh, what will happen? So these are the beginning of sorrows. There will be an increase in these things. Famine, calamities, natural disasters. Mm -hmm. Have we been having some crazy weather lately? Yes. yes. Has the world been experiencing crazy weather? Yes. But they call it what? Climate change. Amen. But Jesus foretold this would happen. But when we see these things and famines, we see an increase in, in these things as well. We see slavery as well, making a comeback. Mm -hmm. But when we see these things are happening, Jesus says these will be the beginning of sorrows. Mm -hmm. The end is not yet. You know why? Ultimately, they will turn towards us, mm -hmm. the third part. They will turn towards the third part, that God sees uh, more valuable in his eyes than uh, fine gold, than the golden wedge of Ophir. Because notice what Jesus says here in verse 9. Then shall they do what? Deliver. Deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So notice with me now, after Jesus says this uh, to the disciples, but talking Really, to you and I living in these last days that are witnessing the fulfillment of these Bible prophecies, these last day events, though the disciples, some of them, experience this in a smaller degree, but we are experiencing these things worldwide in a much larger scale, brothers and sisters. Because Jesus says... There will be famines, pestilences, calamities, war, meaning an increase of these things like we've never seen, like this world have never experienced before. Mm -hmm. But he says, then they will turn towards you. Yes. You will be blamed one day. We will be blamed. The third part there will be blamed for all of these problems and commotion. But notice now. Like we read in Revelation chapter 10, the last verse of Revelation chapter 10, which led us to Revelation 11, where it says, Thou must prophesy again. In spite of all that, notice what Jesus says in verse 14. 
It says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be what? Preach in all the world. For all, what's the word? A witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. This gospel, referring to Jesus. Jesus is the gospel that in spite of persecution, we must go back again and prophesy. Physically what Jesus is saying. We're living in perilous times, amen? amen? But God says we still have a commission. It is through these trials. It is through these commotions. It is through these uh, calamities, wars, and all these things that God will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man more than the golden wedge of Ophir. Brothers and sisters, Bible of prophecy is unfolding right in front of our eyes. And uh, when the disciples asked the, that question, because they wanted to know, you remember the questions again? Let's go back now to verse uh, 3. It says, And as he sat upon Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The disciples wanted to be to get ready, to be ready. Amen? And to stay ready. Because they did not want to miss out on the second coming on heaven. They wanted to know what must we do? What sign should we look for? And we should be wondering the same thing at this, at, at this time. We are seeing these things happening. What must we do? Allow God to purify us. Mm -hmm. To take this seriously because there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow to build, uh, to form character. There is only today. Today, it says, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. But right now, brothers and sisters, what was the commission again? In spite of what's happening, Jesus says, this gospel, verse 14 of Matthew 24, this gospel must be what? Of the kingdom shall be preached of uh, all nations, in all nations, or in all the world, for a witness. That means God will have martyrs. Yeah. So if God is sending his people to be martyrs, to represent him in this world, should we be serious about uh, doing this work for the Lord? Yes. Should we be serious? But where are we today? Notice now, it says, what, what is happening here? It says here, this is uh, from uh, Flo Adventist. It says here, in association with a Southeastern Conference of uh, SDA Youth, Health and Family Life Ministry presents seventh annual Olympic Games and a health fair. We are living in perilous time. What is the church promoting at this time, brothers and sisters? Sports. Sports. And it's all pagan. That's the, you remember we just read in uh, the book of, what, what was it, Isaiah? Mm -hmm. We just read this. This is part of uh, the, the two parts there that God will bring judgment upon. But God is looking for a faithful few, which he calls the third part. No, I'm sorry, that was in Zechariah chapter 13. Zechariah chapter 13. God is looking for a third part right now. A group of people, as we just read, to do what? To purify. To, that would be able to stand, as Malachi says, when God comes as a refiner's fire. Mm. Brothers and sisters, what's happening within uh, the church right now, and it's not just the Adventist church, many churches, they are preparing you to receive the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. The church is desensitizing its members to not be able to stand for God. <coughs> Notice with me now. Let's go to the book of Luke. Which book did I say? Luke. Luke chapter 21. We're going to the book of Luke uh, chapter 21. Keep those events in mind uh, that we just uh, looked at uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 24. But uh, in the book of Luke chapter 21, it's dealing with the same event. But here is something that uh, Luke says here in chapter 21 verse 36. Are you there? Amen. It says, still dealing, uh, Luke 21 goes along with Matthew 24. It says, watch, verse 36, I mean verse 36 of Luke 21, watch ye therefore 
and uh, do what? Pray, Pray always. always. So what's the counsel? This is again uh, in line, uh, in the context, uh, part of the answers that the disciples receive from Jesus after they ask the question, what should we do? What sign should we look for about your second coming? Jesus says to do what? Watch and pray ye always uh, that ye may be accounted. Uh, what is it? What's the word? Worthy. Worthy. What's word comes to mind? The gold. The gold. The gold, uh, the gold must go through the fire to be, to, in order to find out if it's worthy mm -hmm. to be kept. This is what Christ says. Again, let's finish the verse. It says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape. So that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. To escape all these things that shall come to pass. So the first thing is, we must be like gold going through the fire mm -hmm. to be accounted worthy to be able to stand. Yes. What's coming? Then, also, that's, this is not just uh, the only standing. What's the next standing? Mm -hmm. The next standing says, and to stand before, before the Son of God. Yes. We have two standing in front of us, brothers and sisters. Should we at that moment be occupying our mind with sports and entertainment. We have two great standing in front of us to stand worthy of what's coming and to stand before the Son of God. Two standing. It's a great work. These are perilous times. But the church is promoting games, sports. And what else? Notice the focus there. From Adventist Today, April 10th, 2017, Sligo Church Service honors first women ordained as Adventist ministers. Ted Wilson delivers sermon. Ted Wilson recently was uh, invited to this church, which is in Washington uh, State. That was just uh, last Sabbath. And he was invited there. And then while Ted Wilson was there, they were honoring uh, three women pastors there and they did that uh, purposely because they know they know the stand that ted wilson took against women ordination so what's the focus sports entertainment women ordination as if brothers and sisters there's another crisis among us as if brothers and sisters that there is a not a work that needs to be done in us to be able to stand what's coming and to stand before the Son of God. What else? That same church there, Sligo, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Notice now, entertainment. It says here, from Sligo, Seventh-day Adventist Church, Jesse Valesges in concert. Don't miss this great opportunity. Don't miss this great opportunity. To come and worship with uh, this uh, multi-platinum uh, selling Grammy nominated artist that has touched the hearts of millions through her musical ministry. This lady is not even a Seventh-day Adventist, brothers and sisters. With all her jewels decked with gold, makeups. This is what we're inviting in front of our church. That's present truth for this time. <laughs> For this church, brothers and sisters. That is what they call in present entertainment. Yes. How are these members are being prepared to stand for this two great crisis, two great standing? That, that, how will they be able to stand? What is pre occupying their mind at this moment? Entertainment, sports, women ordination. While in the meanwhile, the world is in commotion and agitation. Notice now, what does it say there? This is from uh, the New York Times. China warns of storm clouds gathering in U.S. North Korea standoff. So what's happening, brothers and sisters? We are on, on the brink of, an, of another global war, which Jesus described here, both in Matthew 24 and Luke chapter 21. And uh, the, the disciples wanted to know, how can they be? ready for the soon return of Jesus Christ. This was one of the signs of the times. But the church is not talking about this right now. Mm -hmm. Notice now another article. It says, 
from the Wall Street Journal. With strike on Syria, Trump sends a what? A global message. It says, President's action signals tough approach to leaders of North Korea, Russia, and China. Notice now, brothers and this is not a small matter that is happening right now. Speaking of North Korea, notice what it says here. From uh, the Daily Mail, April 12, 2017. It says, do these uh, satellite images uh, prove uh, North Korea is preparing uh, to detonate uh, a nuclear bomber to mark a sinister day of what? The Which is today? Mm -hmm. That they're celebrating this? The, the what? The yeah. day of the sun. Wait a minute now. I thought North Korea was supposed to be an atheist nation, a communist nation, which, which day they're pushing for? Which day? The day of the sun. Does the world have an agenda? Yes, brothers and sisters. Satan knows that he has a, but a short time. It doesn't matter if they are communists, atheists. It doesn't matter. They are all being controlled by the papacy, by the Jesuits. Again, it says... On the day of the sun, as Trump armada moves in, Trump's armada, we are on the brink of a collapse of World War III, whatever you want to call it. It's happening. Wasn't that what Jesus says? Mm -hmm. Notice now another one here. It says from Life Z, it says North Korea puts world on edge with what is it? Day of the sun suspense. Pyongyang uses communist holiday to stoke a speculation over possible nuclear incident. So are we on the brink of a World War III? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Notice another one here. It says, uh, from independent, Putin orders Russian Air Force to do what? Prepare. To prepare for time of war. Measures, it says, uh, to enhance combat readiness have already begun. The country has been increasing movement of its military, including the launch of the biggest Arctic military push since when? The fall, the fall of the Soviet Union. So notice with me now. So Trump now is going, attacking, invading, or ready to invade these nations. What are they again? Syria. China. North Korea, not China. China is just an ally of North Korea. But uh, that would come into play as well. Syria. North Korea, you have uh, Syria. And, uh, but don't forget Iran. Yeah, that will come into play as well. Don't forget Iran. Now, why these uh, nations there? Those nations, brothers and sisters, those particular nations uh, have been very hostile to Christianity. You understand what I'm saying? Those uh, particular nations have been very hostile. As a matter of fact, uh, you can't really practice uh, Christianity freely within those nations. What we are seeing happening uh, is exactly what the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 13. You don't need to turn there. In Revelation chapter 13, the lamb-like beast mm -hmm. will, will be the one, the same way Justinian provided an army to the, robe, to the papacy, the United States of America is doing the same thing. Our past Protestantism is doing the same thing. By invading these uh, communist nations or Muslim nations where Christianity does not have a stronghold. This is part of uh, reviving, as with Revelation chapter 13 tells us, uh, that the United States of America will give uh, life to the image of the beast. Uh, that the image of the beast should do what? Should both speak, and then what would happen? If you don't bow, you will, you will die. If you won't bow and receive the mark of the beast, uh, you will be persecuted. This is what we see happening. This is the Protestant invasion that we are looking at. Apostate Protestantism. Notice what the, the next article says here. It says, uh, Trump says, uh, North Korea problem will be what? will be taken care of. So everything uh, the Obama administration tried to avoid, Trump is going full speed ahead. Mm -hmm. Notice another one here. And uh, to, to show, to bring pressure on North Korea, to show that he's not fooling around, that he's not playing, notice what it says there. 
It says from uh, ABC News, U.S. drops mother of all bombs on ISIS forces uh, in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. That was April 13th, mm -hmm. 2017, mother of all bombs. Mm -hmm. So when he says uh, that uh, we will take care of North Korea, and then just recently he drops this uh, so-called mother of all bombs there, what message is he trying to send? Oh, brothers and sisters, notice now, here's another one here. Say, dealing with the mo so-called mother of all bombs, it says, uh, CNN, uh, April 13th, 2017, uh, first on CNN, uh, U.S. drops largest non-nuclear nuclear bomb in Afghanistan. The U.S. Uh, military dropped America's most powerful non-nuclear bomb on ISIS targets in Afghanistan. The first time this type of weapon has been used in battle. The first time, brothers and sisters, this has, has been done. So Trump is showing that he's very serious, that he's ready to conquer anyone that would stand in the way. Notice now, this was according to U.S. officials. Nickname the what? The mother of all bombs. Notice what the uh, Spirit of Prophecy tells us here from uh, Great Controversy 589. Satan does what? Delights in uh, war, for it excites uh, the worst uh, passions uh, of the soul and then sweeps into eternity its victims, steep in vice and uh, blood. It is uh, his object, notice with me now, to excite the insight, rather. It is his subject, object, to incite uh, the nations to war against one another. For he can thus do what? Divert the minds of the people from what? From the work of, what is it? Preparation to, what's the word? To stand in the day of God. So all these commotions of wars and the rumors of wars are there to what? To divert the mind. This is the reason why. Let's go back to Matthew 24. This is exactly what Jesus was telling us here in uh, Matthew chapter 24. Remember when he says uh, in uh, verse uh, 6, Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Because these things will be what? Diversion, brothers and sisters. To divert the mind. Be not troubled. Then he says, uh, all these things must come to pass. But the end uh, is not yet. Again, he says, uh, all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Don't be distracted by these things. But what, what are we supposed to be doing then? Ah, there you go. Thank you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and uh, all these things shall be added unto you. That's the reason why verse 14 says, uh, that the, this gospel of the kingdom uh, shall be preached uh, in, all in all nations for a witness. Then the end will come. Don't get distracted. Don't lose focus. Amen. These things are just there to divert the mind. But again, who is leading uh, the nations into this war? The United States of America. This is giving way giving room to the men of sin to come into power. But more specifically now, it's apostate Protestantism mm -hmm. that is behind this. We are heading to a Sunday law. These yes. crises will lead to a Sunday law. Notice what the, this article says here. From a WND, it says, urgent warning for who? For Christians to help Trump beat Obama's shadow government. That was April 4th, 2017. They are calling on who to help with this? On Christians. That's what? Church and state. And what is that? That's the image of the beast. It says, Batman, which is the lady to your right there. She used to be a congresswoman from Minnesota, I believe. Batman believes it is a Possible for America, notice with me now, mm -hmm. to pull back from the, what is it? Sin agenda, Sin agenda of the Obama years and uh, move in a different direction. Oh, brothers and sisters, I wish you could understand what that means. Yes. Yeah, have you ever heard the 
idea of uh, taking the nation back to God? Yes. What's behind this? What, what, what's the end result? Sunday. It's a Sunday law mm -hmm. that's, that's behind the whole thing. If I am going to dictate to the state what the, they should do based on what I believe, uh, talking about uh, religiously speaking here, mm -hmm. based on what I believe, what, what is that? That's, that's uh, creating the image of the papacy. This is what's happening right now. Notice another one here. It says uh, 20,000 Christians tell Congress to do what? To stand for biblical values. How many Christians? 20,000. And they're talking to whom? Congress. Congress. Show me from uh, the Word of God where God tell His people to go to the government uh, and uh, dictate them and tell them that they must follow God's principles. Show me that from the Bible. As a matter of fact, the government came after the disciples. We see that in the book of Acts. We see, we see that in, in, in the gospel. The, the commission, the responsibility that has been given to us, regardless of what we see happening in our world, stay focused. Our mission is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. But uh, we, have, we are seeing a movement to take the nation back to God. While we are being distracted mm -hmm. by the wars and then rumors of wars, what are the Christians, apostate uh, Protestantism doing right now? They are trying to take the nation back to God, creating a distraction here while uh, they're moving forward to this uh, Sunday agenda. Notice another one here. So they're taking action. Remember? They are calling upon Congress to, to do what? To stand for biblical values. So what's uh, one uh, of uh, their biblical values? Well, not just Sunday, but what, what happened two years ago? Immorality. June 26, 2015. Yeah, notice now. It says here, North Carolina lawmakers introduced bill to do what? Yeah. To ban same-sex same marriage that was April 12, 2017. So we are seeing this push there to take uh, the nation uh, back to God. One more time. Another one here. It says from the Huffington Post, uh, church leaders. Who again? Church. Church leaders. Remember, this, they are calling upon the government uh, to stand for biblical values. What's, what's another biblical values there? Notice now. Church leaders are begging their state's senator to give up global warming warning denial. Mm -hmm. So you see what's happening here, brothers and sisters. Notice now, it goes on to say, we, that's the church leaders there, we view science. Who are they relying on here? Science. 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 Keep the days of Noah in mind. Mm -hmm. When the warning came uh, to the antediluvian world, about the judgment of God, they, the majority of them rely on the scientists instead of uh, the word that God spoke through Noah. It's the same thing that's happening again. There were two groups of people who claimed to believe in God in the days of Noah. One believed that the, the signs of the times was, were not yet upon us. That uh, everything could, could go on uh, as it were. But Noah had a different message. That a flood was coming. Is a flood coming, brothers and sisters? Yes, a flood is coming. We are seeing it developing right now. And uh, this uh, thing here about climate change, global warming, this thing has intensified. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. To the point now the whole world is in agitation. The whole world now is demanding action now on climate change. Now, who are demanding action? Not just Christian now. We're talking about church leaders. It says, we view science as a way to depend upon appreciation and wonder at the majesty of God's creation, including the complex, beautiful, and life-sustaining planet Earth, they wrote, we see no conflict, notice now, between our religious faith and the findings of who? Science. Of, of science. So who are they echoing here? 
the papacy. It's the papacy's uh, encyclical on climate change. They are echoing here. Notice now, another one here. So they are we saying, they're saying that we trust science. We trust the scientists over what the Bible says, over what God says, because uh, what the Pope's agenda really goes along with uh, the apostate Protestantism agenda. Because the Pope did not deny it, did, did not hide this within the encyclical that uh, he published on uh, climate change, that uh, the focus was uh, to legislate Sunday. The evangelicals, apostate Protestantism, sees this, and now they're jumping on this uh, Ben Ragan. Notice another one here. It says, uh, from uh, the Huffington Post, uh, April 8th, 2017, uh, why the March for Science and People's uh, Climate March uh, are important. Notice now, the March for Science. Remember this March there, this uh, Climate uh, March is coming. Just, uh, what is it, two weeks from now, I believe, or less than two weeks from now, th there will be this uh, massive uh, march worldwide to take action on climate change. Keep in mind here, prophecy is uh, being fulfilled here. We were told it's the people that would demand the action for Sunday law. Notice now, it says, in the next few weeks, millions, how many? Millions, millions of people will mobilize to take part in several marches. Two most notably, the March for Science. That's on April 22nd, 2017 in Washington, D.C., and 450 other cities around the world, and the People's Climate March on April 29th, 2017, again in Washington, D.C., as well in cities all over the country. My advice to many faithful Seventh-day Adventists, get out of the cities. Amen. Amen. Because we won't be, while we have this time, brothers and sisters, what we must take advantage of it because these things will increase. Notice now, it says, thus the core principles of the March on Science include science that serves the what? Common good. The common good humanizer science. What does it mean to humanize science? What does it mean? What does it mean to humanize something? Huh? Make it more human. <laughs> to make it more human? <laughs> It means, it means to make it to make something uh, more human friendly, to friendlier to human. So they are calling for what? For the common good. What is behind the common good again? Sunday. Notice now what uh, Eddie Jones tells us here. What, on the other hand, is the what? Is the common good? It is a, a very inf indefinite term. Each per each person defines it to suit himself. Government defined it to suit uh, themselves. When we speak of natural rights, it must be with uh, limitation. You know what that means? I mean, slavery will be making a comeback. Then it says, natural rights of the individual in the community are subordinate to the what? To the common good. Sabbath laws. What is it? Sabbath, Sabbath laws have been proved to be for the what? So what is the common good then? Hmm, it's a Sunday law. Then it says, natural rights are sought to be curtailed in the interest of Sunday laws. Sunday laws are a denial of what? Of a natural rights. So when the people goes out into the street and marching, protesting, we must take action on a climate change. The third part, as we read in Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, Zechariah chapter 13, that third part there, want pretty soon, will not have any, what is called here, natural rights. Mm -hmm. We will not have any natural rights. And who is behind this, brothers and sisters? Not, not just the papacy, but the Jesuits. Notice what it says here. Pope Francis says, scientists must defend creation from distorted use by biotech. Pope says, the responsible use of the enormous and growing power of science is fundamental cornerstone of humankind's actions. And so therefore, the people go out on the street responding 
to this call to take action on climate change. As you see here, 7 million steps to the, for the, I'm sorry, for the climate. So we see this, be, the people are being stirred. The third part that God says he wants to purify will pretty soon come under this fiery trials. This is now, brothers and sisters, we, we must learn to endure. As we looked at the, in 1 Peter chapter 1, we must learn to endure because God has reserved for us a, a what? A, what kind of kingdom again? As we looked at in the First Peter chapter 1, remember? In verse 4 of First Peter chapter 1? An incorruptible yes. crown or kingdom that is worth to fight for. That is worth to endure. Notice what Spirit of Prophecy says here. It says, even in a free America, rulers and legislators, in order to secure public favor, will do what? Will yield to the what? To the popular demand for a law enforcing Sunday observance. Isn't that what's happening today? We see the people marching on the streets, calling for action. This prophecy is being fulfilled right in front of our eyes. That it is by popular demand that they will call for a Sunday law. Notice what the, this uh, article says here. This is uh, from a climate uh, collab. It says, uh, one uh, emission-free day per week can make a profound impact on uh, climate change. <laughs> Notice now. Then it says, uh, once a week, give our beautiful planet uh, a day of rest. I wonder which day would that be? Once a week. Then it says, an emission-free day, a green Sabbath day. Which day would that be? Well, let's quote Pope Francis there. It says, he says, it is our profound conviction that the future of the human family depends also on how we safeguard the gift of creation that our creator has entrusted to us. So once a day, we must give uh, the world a break. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, God wants to make a man more precious than fine gold, even uh, than the golden wedge of uh, Ophir. Revelation 13, uh, verses 15 uh, through 17 is about to be fulfilled right in front of our eyes. Amen? You remember what it says there in Revelation 14, uh, 13, 15 through 17? What's that? You would not be able to buy or sell. So the whole world is on board now with this climate movement. Because as the Bible says in Revelation 13 verse 3, the deadly wound is healing. The whole world is bowing to the papacy. The whole world is coming together. Pretty soon, what I am sharing with you and a few others are sharing with you based on signs of the times. And the proclamation of the three angels' messages. Pretty soon, brothers and sisters, we won't be able to do so. Because that would, be, that would go against the popular demand. That would go against with what the majority... But you know what? As we mentioned last time, there's always a smoke screen. They always use a smoke screen. Like we saw how they're using the Jehovah Witnesses mm -hmm. as a smoke screen, Right? As a smoke screen, now they call them extremists. Remember that? Yes. And they're banning uh, their books. They're banning them from uh, worshiping publicly. It was just a smoke screen. Pretty soon, it's going to be us. Mm -hmm. But here is another smoke screen as well. Notice now. It says here, Imam, who made offensive uh, remarks to be re re repatriated, uh, stern warnings for to others. Notice what it says here. The imam that who made controversial remarks against who? Against Christians and Jews after, what, what is it? His sermon earlier this year was uh, fined. Notice now, he made a statement. Now, I, when I read the article, and uh, there was a few other articles that speak of the same thing, it wasn't uh, these uh, pro, uh, provocative or those uh, harsh words uh, uh, that some of them have used in the past. He was just saying that uh, we must stand against 
the Jews and the Christians. That's, that's the only thing he said. It wasn't like a, we, must, we must kill the Jews or anything like that. That's not what he said. That's all he said. Again, that's a smoke screen against those who will dare speak from the Word of God. Use the Word of God to preach the three angels' messages and point uh, to sinners, uh, to Jesus Christ, and also showing them uh, the, who the men of sin is, which is the papacy. But notice now, he was, what again? He was fine. Mm -hmm. Then it says, in what is believed to be the first case here of a religious leader being prosecuted for delivering an inappropriate sermon. Then it says, his, his name is uh, Nala Mohammed, pleaded guilty to one account of committing an act, notice now, which he knew was, uh, what, what's the word? Prejudicial to the maintenance of, uh, what is it? Harmony between different religious groups and was likely to disturb the public uh, tranquility. Now you see the smoke screen there. Yeah. Ah, brothers and sisters. We want harmony between uh, the religions. Mm -hmm. We want harmony between uh, the different faiths. Mm -hmm. We want harmony between the different beliefs. Notice now. So they're using this man mm -hmm. as a smoke screen. But notice what happened next. Mm -hmm. It says, the imam had sins made a public, what is it? Public a public apology and met interfaith leaders to express regret. So what is happening now, brothers and sisters? So we must go and bow. Interfaith. So he apologized. Take it back. Well, God will have a few good men and few good women and young people in these last days that would not bow. Amen? That would not uh, get down and tie their shoes. Brothers and sisters, the mark of the beast is coming. Pretty soon our religious freedom will be taken away from us. What uh, they are promoting right now, they are promoting uh, what the Bible, who the Bible called the men of sin. When uh, as, uh, Isaiah says, I believe it's in chapter 13, uh, that, that the justice has gone backward, Where, whereas now those uh, who, who are committing crimes are the ones uh, being promoting. You know who else, brothers and sisters, they are promoting to show that uh, those of us who will stand for truth in these last days, we will be uh, marginalized, hunted down. You know who they are promoting? Can you think of a character from the Bible uh, who represent, it was a perfect picture of a Satan, but now who is being promoted by the papacy? Barabbas. Barabbas. When you think of Barabbas, what comes to mind? The great controversy should come to mind. You see, you see Jesus and Barabbas uh, standing before the pilot, standing before the, ma uh, the, 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 the mob. Pilate asks, uh, whom shall I uh, release unto you? Jesus or Barabbas? And what happened? He says Barabbas. But notice this article here. It says, from a national Catholic reporter, pray to who? St. Barabbas. Saint Barabbas for release prisoners, April 13th, 2017. He, speaking of Barabbas, he received a great grace by way of the condemnation of Jesus. That's blasphemy, brothers and sisters. Barabbas received a great grace by way of the condemnation of Jesus. Now, here's the picture I want you to keep in mind. If they could say this about Barabbas, who was a murderer, amen? If they could say this about Barabbas, what are they going to say about us in these last days? Think about this for a moment. The man was a, a murderer. But now they're saying that uh, he received grace, a uh, great grace, by way of the condemnation of Jesus. Surely he reaped the benefit. There are many things to pray for these days. But don't forget to pray for prisoners and for those released from prison. Go ahead and do what? Pray, pray to St. Barabbas. Barabbas. Yeah. Do you see how the world is mad? Yeah. 
has gone backward. Now, this is coming from uh, the Roman Catholic Church, brothers and sisters. So what is about to happen uh, to God's people? Notice what it says here from uh, Testimony, volume 5, uh, page 450. It says, The same masterful mind that plotted against the faithful in ages past is still seeking to read the earth of those who fear God and obey His law. Satan will ex excite indignation against the humble minority. Against the who? Humble. The third part there, we just saw in Zechariah. Satan will do what again? Will excite indignation against the humble minority who conscientiously refuse to, re to accept the popular customs and traditions. Men of position and reputation will join with the lawless and the vile to take counsel against the people of God. Notice now, they will do what? Notice now, it's men of reputation. They will join with who? With the lawless. Was Barabbas one of the lawless ones? If not the lawless one in those days, who joined together with Barabbas? The religious leaders. So what is going to happen? As we see the Seventh-day Adventist uh, regular line is joining with the world with, in entertainment. What is about to happen? Is prophecy repeating itself, brothers and sisters? They will join with the lawless to persecute the, the remnant of the seed of the woman. To persecute the, the third part. Zechariah chapter 13. Notice now. It says, uh, persecuting uh, a wealth, genius, education will combine to cover them with content. Persecuting rulers, uh, ministers, and church members will conspire against them uh, with voice and pen uh, by boasts, threats, and ridicule. They will seek to overthrow their, their what? Faith. Their faith. So what kind of faith do we need then? Mm -hmm. Notice now. By false representations and angry appeals, uh, they will stir up the passions uh, of the people. The passions of the people are already being stirred up. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, the question was, what kind of faith do we need? Is it just a, I believe in Jesus? Go back, uh, go back to 1 Peter again. Which book? First Peter. We're going back to 1 Peter. What kind of faith, uh, again, uh, one more time, do, do we need? Because uh, as we looked at what the church is doing, uh, the church is not uh, helping us right now, speaking of the regular line of the Seventh-day Adventist church. They're not preparing us right now to have the faith of Jesus. They, they're pre preparing you to have your own faith. The mark of the beast. That's, well, that's the faith that leads to the mark of the beast. Your own faith, the faith of Jesus, must go through the fiery fi uh, trials. Notice now, we are back to 1 Peter chapter 1, again, uh, beginning uh, in uh, verse 5. Who are kept by the, the power of God through faith, and uh, unto salvation, ready to be delivered or revealed in the last days or the last time, wherein uh, he greatly rejoice, though now for, uh, what is it again? Season. A season. If need be, ye are in heaviness uh, through manifold temptations. Notice now, Peter said, if need be. What does he mean by if need be? What does he mean? Let's read the verse again and uh, think with me for a moment. He says, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, then it says, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Well, notice with me now, brothers and sisters. If God, because as we read before, that God will not cast any worthless stone into the fiery furnace, right? Isn't that what we read earlier? He would not cast any un worthless stone into the fiery furnace. But if uh, God sees uh, in me something special, amen? Peter says, if need be, God uh, would allow me to go through some trials. If he sees uh, that that's what's going to help me to come out uh, more precious than fine gold, if need be, 
even though we may face some manifold temptation, if need be, look at the life of Job as, we, as we've been talking about this. Remember, the life of Job, the experience of Job will be the experience of God's people in these last days and the experience of the 144,000. Remember, Job went through these fiery trials, but God preserved his life. The 144,000 that we read about uh, that stood uh, on Mount Zion with the Lamb, they will go through similar trials, brothers and sisters. But God will preserve their lives. His experience will be our experience. Let's keep reading verse uh, 7. And the Bible says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than what? Than, gold. than uh, of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and a glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, verse 8, whom having not seen, that's faith there. Amen. That's the kind of faith that God wants you and I to have. Not seen, faith is what? Is the substance of things hoped for the Hmm. So we do not see our master right now, Jesus Christ, but do we believe in his appearing, yes. his coming? Notice now, it says, Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. God is not finished with you and I yet. We must hang on at the end of our faith. Notice with me now. Go to First uh, Peter, uh, not First Peter, uh, Matthew with me. Which book? We, as we're coming to a close, no worries. We're coming to a close. Matthew chapter 23. Which book are we going to? Matthew chapter 23. So again, uh, keep in mind. Well, as a matter of fact, keep a finger there in the book of Matthew chapter 23. Let's read one more time uh, what the First Peter says. First Peter chapter 4. Keep a finger, keep something there in Matthew 23. We'll come back to that. But let's go to 1 Peter 4. We were there earlier. There is a passage that we want to look at one more time. 1 Peter chapter 4. And uh, remember what uh, the apostle says in 1 Peter chapter 4. Are you heading there? Amen. And, the, and the Bible says, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning in uh, verse 12. Are you there? Amen. And it says, Beloved, think it not, what is it? Strange. What is it? Strange. What is it? Concerning the what? The fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But what must you do? Rejoice. Rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when he is here is the second coming. You see how many times we see the connection there? Be, uh, between uh, the, our fiery trials and the second coming. So God wants us to endure till the end. Then again, uh, it goes on to say, When his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is uh, evil spoken of, but on your part, he is uh, glorified. And the Bible tells me that uh, this uh, precious uh, character that we must have in these last days must be more precious uh, than gold. Because uh, what happened to gold? Gold, uh, perisheth. Yeah. And this is the reason why, as we turn back now to Matthew 23, where are we going? Matthew 23. This is the reason why the Jesus there in Matthew 23 was rebuking the hypocrisy of the religious leaders there. Notice what he says to them there in verse 16 of uh, Matthew chapter 23. Is everybody there? Amen. Matthew chapter 23, verse 16. He says, Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say whosoever shall, uh, what's the word? Swear by the temple, it is nothing, but whosoever shall shall do what? Swear by the what? Gold. The gold of the temple. It is what? A he is a, a debtor. <coughs> then he says, ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gold, the gold 
or the temple that's sanctifying the gold. Are you catching the question there? Which one is greater? Keep uh, Isaiah 13, 12 in mind. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Jesus is rebuking the Pharisees, the religious leader there, who put more value on the what? On the, on the gold than the, 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 the temple. The question came to them from Jesus. The question was, which is uh, more valuable? Which is, more, which is greater? The temple or the, the gold? What's the temple? We are. Mm. Are you catching the picture? We are the temple of the living God. You know what's happening within our churches, brothers and sisters? Our churches have become a place of business where the pastors is just getting paid to entertain, to clock in and clock out, that's right. But not uh, as the Apostle Paul says, not feeding the flock. They put uh, more value on the gold, on the money that they're making. Then on the temple, which represents the people of God. They care more about their pockets. So Jesus says again, uh, back uh, to verse 17, Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold? What does the temple say, do? It sanctified the gold. But uh, notice with me now. The temple, what comes to mind? Thy way, O Lord, is where? The sanctuary. The sanctuary. That's the, also the temple. That's God's way. God's way of uh, cleansing and preparing someone to stand is in the temple, is in the sanctuary, not the gold, because God's presence was in the temple. God's presence was there. Remember, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit comes into that body. Which is more valuable? The character of the person? Huh? Which is more valuable? Brothers and sisters, this is where we are. This is why many preachers within our denomination, Seventh-day Adventists, are staying away from, from this because pastoring to them has become a, a job, like a going to uh, uh, working for Microsoft for clocking in, clock out. And instead of seeing it, it's, a, it's more precious than that. Yeah, they want position and power. God wants to make a man more precious than find gold. Gold perisheth. Yes. Our character, if we endure, will not perish. Gold, even though the blacksmith may take the gold through the fire and the gold will come out spotless. But that gold, brothers and sisters, that same gold that the blacksmith will do that too, uh, to take it through the fire, that same gold will perish at the appearing of uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. The only thing that's going to stand is my character, your character, if, if we allow him to purify us. Notice what it says there on the screen. It says uh, from manuscript 110, 1901, those who hold how fast their faith unto the, what is it? the end, what would happen? Yes. Will come forth from the furnace of trial as fine gold seven times purified. Amen. Amen. Seven times purified. Of this work, the prophet Isaiah says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. When in trouble, remember that faith tried in the furnace of affliction is what? More precious than gold tried with fire. Remember that there is one watching every movement to see when the last, uh, notice with me now, the last particle of dross is taken away from your character. Who is watching for this? Who is watching for this? 
Okay, so that means as long as uh, we remain, He allow us to remain in this fire, it's because He's still seeing some particles. It is then that you are counted more precious than the golden wedge of Ophir. When, when are you counted more precious? No, notice the context there. It says, remember that there is one watching every movement. You see the context there? To see when the last particle of dross is taken away from your character. Then it says, it is then that you are counted more precious than, golden, than the golden wedge of Ophir by hiding with Christ in God, fallen men, which is the state of purity. Oh, brothers and sisters, this is what God wants to do for me. This is what God wants to do for you. God wants us to reach this uh, state of uh, purity. When every particles, everything is subdued, everything is fully surrendered to God, every preconceived idea, then it goes on to say, those who love the riches of this world should remember that faith in Christ is what? More precious than gold. For gold perishes, the saints of the living God have a glorious hope. The, the, what's the hope there? Fusion of uh, rich is a life of immortality. But uh, in order for me to inherit this, which is as the Apostle Peter says, it's an incorruptible inheritance. Remember? First Peter chapter 1 there. It is an incorruptible inheritance. God wants to give us something that will not corrupt. So that, therefore, I must produce a character that would not corrupt. Amen. Amen? Isn't that the end of the matter? God loves us, brothers and sisters. As we're coming to a close, let's go to, let's close with uh, Matthew. Which book are we going to? Matthew. Matthew chapter 13. After the goal is purged, what would be left, brothers and sisters? A man that, is, that has been... Uh, uh, more, made uh, more precious than fine gold, even uh, than the golden wedge of Ophir. We're going to Matthew chapter 13. Where are we going? Matthew 13. So after the gold is purged, after God sees uh, all uh, the last particles, as Sister White says, have been removed. What happened? Notice verse 43 of Matthew chapter 13 as we're coming to a close. Notice with me now. It says, Then, what is it? Then, then shall the righteous shine. Notice now, the gold will shine. The righteous the, will shine. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun. Where? In the kingdom of their father who have ears to hear, let him hear. Then, brothers and sisters, when the last particles have been removed, thank God that he's watching, that he's making sure that the last particles have been removed from uh, the gold, from the character. I praise God that he's doing that. What if, brothers and sisters, he had turned it aside and wasn't watching? When judgment comes, I will be found with those uh, particles on me. Amen? Thank God that he's watching, that he cares enough to make sure that we are purified, that we come out pure, on the other end of this. I praise God for this. Amen. So God wants to make us uh, in this context there. A man, a woman, a young person, more precious than fine gold, even than the golden wedge of Ophir. Let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, Lord God Almighty, thank you, Father, for seeing something in us that uh, as your servant says, if we were worthless, you would not take the time uh, to send us into the fiery furnace. I thank you in a special way, Father, for seeing the potentials in me, in us, in everyone here. Help us to endure all things, to count it all joy, as the apostle says, that we should rejoice and uh, one of the reasons why it's because God sees something in us. God wants us to be with Him. We should rejoice. That's the reason why He allows us to go through the fiery furnace. We should rejoice always. Help us to remember these things. Help us to also to remember 
that heaven is cheap enough. Help us also to remember that your dear Son had paid a much greater price, has gone through severe trials and temptation that we cannot even comprehend and uh, that you would never allow us to go through. Help us to remember those things. Help us to be of a good courage. Help us, Father, to face whatever you may allow to come our way with boldness, knowing and keep our eyes focused on this incorruptible inheritance that you promised to give us. We pray for your blessing upon each one here and those that are watching. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <coughs>